This is Dr. Jeannie Scholl, and we will be exploring ways of experiencing active imagination as was originally created by Carl Jung. One of the ways of starting active imagination is to focus in on our emotional state or perhaps kind of instinctual impulses that keep coming up, as well as images. Jung suggested that by concentrating on an emotionally disturbing state, that we wait until we have a visual image. So in a way, we start by visualizing a mood tone. However, for some people, this feels too activating, too threatening. So there's other ways of working with active imagination. But for Jung, he suggested that the emotional state be the basis or the starting point of the procedure and that you become as conscious as possible of the mood you're in and then kind of drop into it, kind of sink into that feeling tone while writing down all the fantasies or other associations that arise. Of course, you can also do this on your computer or you can record it on your phone. Fantasies must be allowed to really have free reign, according to Jung. However, not in a way that takes them off on a tangent. He strongly urged you to stay with the affect, to stay with the emotional state. As I said, for some people, this feels too activating, too potentially overwhelming. So another way is to begin with a powerful image, one that really holds your attention. You might say one that's really got a hold of you. It might be from a powerful dream. It might be something you've envisioned. Or it could be from a fantasy that reoccurs, that keeps coming up for you. So whether this is a visual image, or maybe the voice from a dream, or a recurring voice you hear in your head, or it could also be a physical symptom, as well as the possibility of an experience that feels very profound for you. So give whatever that image is, visual, sound, physical, your total attention, your full concentration, until it comes alive, until it can begin to communicate with you. Whether that is somatically changes you notice in your body, or a dialogue you hear in your mind, allowing what happens to happen is this idea of working in active imagination. As you're preparing to do and experience active imagination, the first step is to just determine how will you record this. As, as I've mentioned, you might be sitting at your computer as you experience this, you might have your journal in your arms and, and you record the dialogue or the environment that you see in front of you. Perhaps you're very uh, verbal and you want to have your phone on record and, and talk through it out loud to yourself. It's really important that you give yourself the privilege of being in a private space, one that feels safe, your temenos, 
a place where you won't be disturbed, you won't be distracted, and you won't be overheard. Another suggestion that has worked well for many people is to choose a specific item of clothing, perhaps a large oversized shirt that you can put on over your regular clothing, but that you use just to communicate to yourself that now it's time for active imagination. So this becomes part of the ritual of deepening into your active imagination process. But also, it becomes the ritual of ending active imagination for you by removing this garment. So look around and see if there's something that you can use in much the same way that a visual artist puts on their painting smock before they begin their process. Now, if you have concerns about not being able to come out of active imagination, one approach many people might choose to use is to set a timer, but also to make a commitment to yourself that when the timer goes off, you're going to return to the here and now. Another recommendation that Robert Johnson makes in inner work is that you have a resource person available that you can call if you should have difficulty turning off the images of your active imagination. And this should be somebody who's readily available, who can talk to you about how it's time now to come back to your current reality. So setting your temenos, setting up your situation privately, being aware of how you're going to record and how you feel safe. Then, when you're ready, we'll do a body scan together. And this way you can understand what is meant by body scan. So I suggest you begin with your feet comfortably on the floor, or if you're reclining, having your feet standing with your knees in the air. So you feel your feet against the surface that's supporting you. And then you might roll through your feet, you might allow your feet to move against your supporting surface. You might roll through your ankles. And if you feel tension in your feet, perhaps you might exaggerate it, maybe really flexing your feet and then releasing them. And take that same awareness up into your calves, into the muscles in your calves. And maybe again, create some tension so you can allow it to dissipate. You can allow it to let go. And then notice how your knees feel. And again, if you feel like your knees are uncomfortable in the position you're holding, adjust, allow comfort to come into your awareness. And then take that same awareness up into your thighs and allow your quadriceps, your hamstrings to let go, to let go of tension. And then noticing how are your hips, your pelvis feeling against your support. Again, if you feel uncomfortable, feel free to readjust your position. Or if you feel like, oh, you're really holding tension in your hips, give them a squeeze, tighten your glutes, and then release. And allow the breath to come in. And in fact, imagine breathing from your pelvis, down your thighs, through your knee joint, into your calves, into your ankle joints, and then allowing that breath to be released through your toes. 
So you begin to feel like the whole lower half of your body is in a state of comfort. And then from here, let's take a deep, full breath up into the chest and then expanding down into the abdominal cavity and really release tension there in the abdomen. If it takes another breath or two, full, deep cleansing breath, allow it to come in so that you can feel that your abdomen, your stomach area, your diaphragm has released any tension. And then take that breath again into the lungs, into the chest. Allow the breath to be as full as you can, you can muster. And then as you think of exhaling, imagine exhaling through the shoulders, down the upper arms, the elbows, the forearms, and releasing out your fingertips until your shoulders feel easy, your chest is breathing fully. And then let's bring the awareness into your neck and your shoulders, allowing some rotation with your head, either against the surface you're reclining on or as you support your head with your neck. And let the breath come in. You don't want to be holding your breath as you attempt to release tension. And as you allow this relaxation to come into your physical body, imagine allowing that same release to happen for your mind and your soul, allowing a sense of being receptive to occur. And in this state of receptivity, allow the image in whatever form it wants to arise. And begin to give that image your attention. Follow it. Really stay with that image. But also be present to your own feelings. Even as you get curious and you interact with the image that is visiting. Perhaps you ask the figure, who are you? What do you have to tell me? And then really listen, rather than preparing your own response, deepen into that ability to take in what the image is offering. and allow this to be a dialogue between equals. The goal is not to control the conversation. But to be receptive. It's also important that we treat our inner figures with the same consideration that we treat the people in our daily lives. So stay true to your own moral compass. And be cautious about not over-identifying with an archetype. The goal is not to go off on an inflation, 
and become possessed by an archetype. So maintain your own ego independence. And act and interact truthfully and thoughtfully with your inner figures. Imagine being as compassionate with the images that visit as you would be with a loved one. When you feel you've been in the unconscious realm long enough, or your timer goes off, or maybe you feel overwhelmed or exhausted suddenly, bring your awareness back to your feet on the floor. And it's often a good idea to repeat the body scan. So let's explore that again, feeling your feet on your supporting surface, noticing if it's different now and how it's different. Rolling through your ankles, coming up into your calves. Noticing if there's suddenly more tension there or if it's the same as when we began. Taking that awareness into your knee joints, into your thighs, and into your pelvis. And noticing again, whether you're giving in to the surface upon which you're relaxed, or if you're holding tension anywhere in your lower body. And then bringing that same awareness into the abdominal area, allowing the breath to become full again, if it hasn't been, into your chest, breathing fully into your lungs. If you can imagine it breathing down into your diaphragm, allowing that breath to flow down through your shoulders, your upper arms, your elbows, your forearms, and out your fingertips, releasing anything that you no longer need. And then again, taking that awareness into your neck, allowing your head to adjust if you need to. And then perhaps tapping or imagine scraping your arms, fingers, through the chest, the torso, your back, and down your legs, all the way to your feet, inviting your body awareness back into the here and now in this moment. And then as you're becoming fully present to your temenos, your space, and consciously aware of your environment around you with your eyes open, it would be a good time now to remove the garment that designated that you were doing active imagination. Place it back in its particular spot as a way of inviting yourself back into your daily life. And this ritual of body scanning, of actually touching, self-reference touch to ground yourself, and then removing the garment is a way of telling ourselves that the session is now over. 
It's always important to remember, as Robert Johnson insists, that we don't now go act out our active imagination in our real life, but instead that we find a way of creating a ritual, something to commemorate all that energy from our active imagination. Perhaps for you, it's creating a painting or doing an improvisational dance or taking your dialogue and writing a poem, or maybe it manifests as a song or sculpture, but you find a way of working with this energy from the unconscious and giving it form. And that holds its significance in your daily life without in any way causing you to act it out with other living human beings. There's so many ways this can take physical form. One way is simply the dialogue that you wrote down. Exploring Jung's Red Book, he walks us through so much dialogue with his inner figures, demonstrating what active imagination was for him. Other singers, songwriters will find that songs are actually created out of their dream time and their work in active imagination with those verbal sounds or voices. Dance can also be generated from dream time and from the act of imagination of working with those images. Catherine Samford created paintings out of her act of imagination. So there's many ways of continuing the act of imagination. This image here is sand play. It can be psychodrama or creative drama. Music can be composed as a way of dreaming the dream onward. That's one way that active imagination has been explained. Certainly in the Red Book, we see how Jung created so many different forms of visual art from both his dreams and his active imagination, his dialogue with his inner figures. So finding your way is what's important. Um, Jung himself said, don't go with my way, it's what worked for me, but find your own way. And I strongly support that for each of you, that you find what works for you and continue that exploration. And here are some of the experts that supported our work today. <laughs>